We are certainly extremely thrilled to be in Moldova. Moldova is uh, an amazing uh, example of what can uh, transformation power of, the, of Europe can do even for the worst run areas in the past of uh, former Soviet sphere of influence and certainly the country that had suffered immensely from uh, Soviet period and from domination of uh, the Communist Party of this part of uh, Europe, how it can relieve itself from the past and how it can gradually move towards Europe. And I think what really had happened in Moldova for the last several years, when young people of Moldova has really become the driving force of uh, European integration, together with our colleagues here, um, uh, Liberal Democratic uh, uh, Party, I think this is a very good example of what what the what the uh, you know yeah, new generation of politicians can accomplish in almost hopeless situations, and so uh, I would like to compliment you. And on the other hand, I want to express our own um, uh, um, uh, regret that initially, when we were on a winning ticket with Moldova, Georgia, at this stage, when we just a couple of years ago we were talking about possibility already in Vilnius for Georgia and uh, Moldova not only to get association agreement but to get European perspective and unfortunately Georgia couldn't unfortunately as President Martin said had created some difficulties what happened in Georgia since last year and uh, I think they are temporary I think they're provisional I think they will not okay, cannot last and will not last but uh, certainly it's a pity that now there are much more talk about problems in Georgia than it was ever before. Um, and I think this is not due to all domestic problems in Georgia, but what really happened in the region, what really happened in the region was that, you know, Russia first used all kinds of means. They used the economic embargo, energy embargo. In 2008, Georgia was attacked by the full extent of Russian army aviation and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, sea of force. And despite this big military attack and war, Georgia continued to progress. And Georgia continued to progress with high growth rates, with uh, low, very low corruption rates, with very low crime rates, with uh, excellent business environment. And this was the worst problem for our Russian neighbors. Not so much the European aspiration per se, or NATO aspirations of Georgia, but the fact that we turned out to be a successful country. But uh, we, at the same time as being a successful country, we also were a democracy. So obviously, a uh, new way how to manipulate and how to use political influences is after war had failed, after embargoes had failed, was to get into political process through democratic means. And before our elections, billions of dollars of Russian money came into Georgian politics. In combination with military pressure and uh, provocations and now the money certainly it uh, contributed to election results in Georgia with all the other pro issues that we had and certainly the situation that emerged after elections is something that I think this the whole process went for the process was basically to get Georgia off the track of the track not so much even by political declarations but by mere fact that there are internal difficulties and problems now that creates a situation when it's much more difficult, unfortunate for me and tragically for me personally because I, I, I invested so much in that, about faster speed for Georgia's integration to Europe. As I say, this is uh, what happened in my country. This is what happened before my country in Ukraine. I think this is what the risk is related also to our Moldovan friends and I should be very frank about it, I think the same methods that were applied to Georgia by the same people will be very much applied to Moldova for months and years to come as they've been applied in recent past. We all know that. We share some of the things in recent past that were applied to us as well as the conflicts that also make lots of commonalities. And from that point of view, I think the best recipes, no matter what they do, no matter what the enemies of progress of our countries do, to go forward, to integrate, to build European future, to build democracy, to empower the youth, and not to look back. I think forces that are taking us back have no future for themselves. I think it's just a matter of time after the whole 
imperial sphere of uh, what is today Russian Federation will disintegrate, very, and I think we will disintegrate as an imperial, imperial sphere and sphere of influence very fast. But of course, I wish all the best to the Russian people and their nation. But we should, we have only one home, one direction, one aspiration, and no matter what, we'll go in that direction. That's, I'm totally convinced of that. I was convinced of that when I first came as a uh, beginning, beginner president to this very palace, I remember a few years ago, to what was then the CIS uh, sponsored meetings. And I'm small, that we are no longer members of CIS. Things have changed. I'm more than ever convinced now, even all, with all our setbacks. Again, good luck, thank you, and let's uh, uh, steer on that course.